All right, you got your Bible, go to the book of John. I'm going verse by verse the book of John. And uh, we're at chapter number one, chapter number one. We actually were further than that, to be quite open with you. But I decided to go back and uh, revisit some things. And uh, so, uh, John chapter number one. You got the Bible, John chapter number one. And we're going verse by verse. We found our way to verse number 12. We found our way to verse number 12. Amen. All right, John chapter number 1, verse by verse. All right, now we are at verse number 12. Let's read it again. All right, the Bible says, actually we'll back it up. And we're going to look at verse number uh, 10. We'll start at verse 10. John chapter 1, verse number 10. He was in the world. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody understands that, right? God manifest in the flesh. He, God, Jesus, was in the world. And the world was made by Him. And the world knew Him not. Yeah. They didn't know Him. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. Verse 12. But as many as received Him... To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. We'll read verse 13 too. Which were born not of blood. Nor of the will of the flesh. Nor of the will of man. But of God. Amen. Now that's a great, great passage on how to be saved, amen. Yeah. How to know you're going to heaven when you die. And, uh, and, and it says, and we're, we're going to dissect the passage, but verse 12 is what we talked about last time. But as many as received him. We talked about that word receive last time. That word receive, it simply means uh, to accept the gift by faith. That's what it means. To accept, to believe. What you say, it defines it. It's connected to the word belief here. Verse 12. But as many received him, to them gave power to come to the sons of God, even to them that what? Believe. believe on his name. So to receive is to believe. You cannot believe, you cannot receive unless you believe. Amen. All right, you have to believe in order to receive. And I took you over there to the Old Testament. Uh, where we, he used the word received, where someone come to give a gift and they accepted that gift. Right. Okay, they accepted that gift. And I told you the first passage that was used, the word received, was when the ground received the blood of Abel. Amen. And on the inside of that ground, that ground began to cry out, uh, cursings, cursings, cursings. And Cain was cursed. Okay. Uh, because of what took place. But when we accept, we receive uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, you receive His blood sacrifice. And when you receive that blood sacrifice, at that moment you accept that blood sacrifice, and then now the blood on the inside, Jesus Christ's blood, it cries out redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And so you have to accept. What it means to receive, it means to accept the gift. And the gift is Jesus Christ's sacrifice at Calvary. You have to accept. You have to receive Him. You have to receive that blood sacrifice. Let's keep going. Okay, so the word receive is connected to the word accept. Okay, if you do not accept the blood sacrifice that Jesus Christ did, by faith accept that sacrifice, you are not saved. There has to come a time where you accept the gift. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So you have to accept the sacrifice. Amen. You have to accept Jesus Christ. If you don't accept Jesus Christ, then you're not saved. That's right. You have to accept, okay? You have to receive Him. Now, now receive the gift. You understand it's a gift and you receive it. Now he says in verse 12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that what? Believe, believe on his name. Now now we want to talk about the word belief. We want to define what the Bible means by belief. Because the Bible tells us that the devils also believe and tremble. 
The Bible is very clear about it. But we know that the, that the, bi, that the devils are not uh, going to be able to enter into the perfect, spotless, wonderful place called heaven. Amen. Right. They're not going to be able to enter there as redeemed creatures. The devils are not. And so to believe. So what does it mean to believe? What does it mean by that? We know we just got through seeing that it was connected to the word receive. Yep. So to receive is to believe. To believe is to receive. And we understood a while ago that to receive is to accept. Let's look at the first time the word belief is used in the Bible. Look at Genesis 15 with me. Look at Genesis chapter 15. Here is the very first time that the word belief in any form is used in the Bible. And again, this is what we call, when it comes to interpreting the Bible, the law of first occurrence. So anytime you, you want to know what a, a word means, all you go back to when it was first used, and that gives you the main foundation of that word. Amen. Pretty much throughout the rest of the Bible. It's called the law of first occurrence, okay? That's how you study your Bible. Now, uh, look at the book of Genesis, chapter number uh, 15. Let's see, here's the first time the word belief in any form is used in the Bible. Genesis 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eli Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given, me no, given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him. Now, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bow shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Look at verse number 6. And he what? Believe. Believed. What does it say? In the, in the Lord. And he, talking about God, counted it to him, Abram, for righteousness. Amen. So he believed in the Lord. And when he believed in the Lord, the Bible says that was counted unto him for righteousness, Amen. right? Yeah. So, now, I think it's interesting that this first time the word belief has to do with a baby being born. Yes, sir. And in order to be born again, you must believe. Amen. Right? So there's a reason why God's doing this. And this baby that he's talking about is going to be his son, who? Isaac, whom he's going to take and going to sacrifice on Mount Moriah as a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ being sacrificed on Mount Calvary. Amen. Right? It's all a picture here. Right. God has given you something to teach you something. Amen. Okay, so this belief, so what happens is, and this passage is very clear, God speaks to him and tells him, look at the stars. Can you count those? And of course he came and he says, so shall your seed be. And he believes in the Lord. And when he believes in the Lord, it is imputed, that word imputed unto him righteousness. Now we all understand what an ampute is. To amputate something. is to cut something off. So to impute something. What does that mean? You're putting something on. <laughs> Okay, so to ampute is to cut off something and to cast it away. To impute is to put something on. Okay, it's, it's something on the outside, something from without. It's not on you. It's not part of you. You're taking something that's not part of you and you're putting it on you. That's what's taking place. And so he believed in the Lord. And once he believed in the Lord, that belief caused him to be imputed righteousness. So righteous that he did not have. He didn't have that righteousness. He was not righteous uh, within his own, his own self. Right. Instead, because he believed in the Lord, it then began to be put on him. He got righteousness. Amen. This is a very important. Yeah, right. Very important. And this imputed righteousness come to him by how? Believing. Believing. Now let's, let's, let's 
Figure this thing out. Romans 4. Look at Romans 4. Look at Romans 4. Romans 4. If you want to be born again, if you want to be God's child, if you want to know for sure you're going to heaven when you die, you have got to be born again. And the way you're born again is to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, right? John chapter 1, which means to accept Him by faith. That's what it means. To accept the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, we have Christmas here. And uh, uh, whether you believe in Christmas or not believe in Christmas, it makes no difference. But there is some, some symbolics I can teach you here in this. You give gifts to people you love. Amen. And they, they accept that gift because, uh, and, and they're accepting it. And they didn't do anything for it. They get it because you love them. Yeah. Well, God loved us so much that He gave the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And you have to accept that gift. Now you can be a spoiled brat. And say I don't want that gift. And kick it. And say I don't even like you. And turn away from that gift. And, and, and as a result. It's, you don't get it because you don't accept it. That's the only reason you don't get it. That's it. So you have to accept that gift. You have to accept it. Now, it says here, He believed and it was imputed to Him for righteousness. What did He believe? He believed the Word of God. Amen. When God said to him, He said to him, Listen, look at the stars. The Word of the Lord came to him and said, Look at the stars. And you see that? Can you count those? And of course, He could. He said, So shall your seed be. And He believed in what the Lord spoke. Right. What God said, He believed it. And because He believed what God said, He is imputed righteousness. Hallelujah. That's what it means to believe. Because the Bible says you are born again, the book of 1 Peter, I'm going get ahead of myself, not by corruptible seed, but by incorruptible seed, by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Right. Now go to says Romans 4. It's not by believing in a church. Nope. It's not by believing in a pastor, a preacher, a priest, or anything of that nature. It's by believing in thus saith the Lord Amen. and what he said in particular about Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me show you this. I'll show you this in a minute. Look at Romans 4. Look at Romans 4. This is in the book of Romans chapter 4. Look at verse number 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father is attained to the flesh have found? For if Abraham were justified by works, what he could do, he hath whereof to glory. He could glory in that. But not before God. I mean, I, 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 I could never glory in front of God. Now I might can find some glory in your eyes. But your glory is very shallow. <laughs> you're, you, can, you can heap glory on me one minute and the next minute reap glory on me. <laughs> one minute you can love me and say, wherever you go, Pastor Phil, I'm with you. I'm standing behind you. Next minute, kill him. <laughs> Get rid of him. Right? That's why man's glory is shallow. Man's praise is very shallow. For man to put his his his, his back, say you're a dude, you're a good bloke, mate. You're a good man. You're you're a good guy. That's nothing. <laughs> For a man to say hocus pocus, alamagosis, you're saved. Preach. That's nothing. Because right. what's a man's word? Amen. A man's word is nothing. Amen. For me to take my hands and baptize you in water and say, now you're a Christian. Well, that's nothing. Because my words mean nothing. Right. It's God's words that matter. Amen. It's His words. And so it says in verse number 2, For if Abraham were justified by works, he had word to glory, but not before God. For what saith what? Scripture. He said, what does the Bible say? <laughs> this is what Paul is saying Amen. here. Paul is, even Paul the Apostle, when he preached and when he taught, he says, listen, I got something to teach you. What does the Bible say about this? <laughs> that he goes over, what saith the Scripture? What does it say? Abraham believed God. Now he's going he's to tell you what the word imputed means. And it was, what does it say? Counted unto him for righteousness. Yep. To impute means to be counted. Amen. See, 
Abraham, you guys know the story, he messed up with Hagar. Yep. He did a lot of things bad wrong. Right. Every one of the heroes in the faith did wicked things. Yes, bad things. Yes, Some of them really, really bad. Amen. And so if it's based upon them, they wouldn't make it. But it says that this belief was counted to him righteous. Verse number 4. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. But to, so in other words, if you could work your way to heaven, that means God would owe you something. God doesn't owe any man. Man owes God. Verse number 5. But to him that work... Now look at the Bible says. This is a great passage. But to him that worketh not does no work. Not any. But to him that worketh not. We're talking about working for getting to heaven. But to him that worketh not. But what's it say? Believeth on him that justifieth who? The ungodly. The ungodly. His face is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man. Unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Saying blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven. And whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord. Like what does it say? Will not impute sin. Wow. Did you guys get that? Yes, sir. I don't know if you got that or not. How great that is. No. What the, he's saying is this, is that, see, Abraham was sinful. I'm sinful. You're sinful. We're all sin. We all do mistakes. But when we receive Christ, we believe in what God said, and we trust in Him, which is what we're going to show you that in a minute. When we put our trust on Jesus Christ, and we accept Him as our God, as our Savior, as our Lord, at that, and our sacrifice, no longer our works, not our religion, not our good deeds, at that moment, all of His righteousness, which is perfect, sinless righteousness, gets put on me. And all of my sins gets put on him at Calvary's tree. And now I know. So now God imputes my sin to Jesus Christ on the cross. And he imputes his righteousness to me. Amen. We, get, we, 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 we exchange bank accounts. That's right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's what happens. I was bankrupt with righteousness. Yeah. I had no righteousness. Just completely bankrupt. Jesus Christ is banks just overflowing. <laughs> Completely righteous. And then what happens is God says, man, you're bankrupt. You have nothing to pay me. And you owe a great debt that you can't pay. But when I'm going to send my son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for your sins and be buried in the grave. And if you'll put your trust and believe on him, receive him, accept that gift, accept it. All of a sudden, it's completely, your bank account's overflowing with Amen. righteousness. Amen. <laughs> and you get to come in. <laughs> By simply believing on him. Receiving him. Now look what it says. Look what it means, what it means to believe. Look, he's going to show you. Verse 13. For the promise, verse 13, for the promise, he's going back to Genesis 15, is what he's doing, going back to, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. They didn't get it through the law, but through the righteousness of what? Faith. faith. For if they which the law be heirs, faith is made void. And the promise made of none effect. In other words, what he's saying is, if you could work your way there, you wouldn't need faith. That's right. That's what he's saying. He's saying there's no reason for Jesus Christ to have come and paid for your sins and you had to trust in him because you could work your way there. Yeah. Verse number 15. Because the law worketh wrath. Who are no law is? There is no transgression. That's why little children can go to heaven. Amen. Little babies. Verse 16. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be. What does that say? Sure. sure. To all the sea. We are safe and sure. We got security. Not to that only which is of the law, but that which is also sorry, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As is written, I have made I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. He's going to tell you what it means. Even God who quickeneth the dead. And calleth those things which be not as though they were. This is so important. God told Abraham, listen Abraham, see the stars of the, of the sky. Your seed's going to be like that. Yep. Now, he was as good as dead. Yep. 
Sarah had no, her womb was, was dead. It was closed. Amen. It was impossible with man. That's right. There was nothing Abraham could do. There was nothing Sarah could do to bring forth a child. Nothing any of them could do. Yeah. And so it's impossible. With man, it is impossible. Right. It doesn't even make any sense. Amen. Makes no sense to say a little child's been born of you, Abraham, through Sarah's womb. Now look what happens. This is some good stuff here. Huh? Yes, Verse number 18. Who now what does it say? Who against hope believed in hope? <laughs> it said over in the book of Genesis, he believed in God. Yeah. Here it says he believed in hope. Amen. Right? Who is our hope? Jesus Christ is our hope because He's God. He's God in the flesh. Look what it says in this passage. Who against hope believed in hope that He might become the Father of many nations according to that which is spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, He considered not His own body, now dead, when He was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Look what it says, verse 21. And being fully persuaded that what He had promised, He was able also to perform and therefore that's what it means to believe and therefore is imputed to him for righteousness he was persuaded that what God said was right God was the one that said it I'm going to trust you God it's just believing and trusting in God what he said that's what it means now I'll show you how, 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 what it, how it applies to us you know how I got saved? How you get saved? How you must get saved? You had to believe, thus say the Lord, for all have sinned that come short of the glory of God. Right. That you're a sinner. Yeah. That, that you cannot reach God's perfection. You all fall short of the glory of God. Right. The wages of sin is death. Yeah. You deserve to die and not just die, but you also deserve to go to hell. Yes, sir. Because the Bible says in the book of Revelation, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns the fire of brimstone, which is the second death. Yes, well, guess what? Guess who's a liar? Let God be true, but every man a liar. Every man at his best state is all together vanity. A show. You're empty. You're show. That's what he's saying. You have to believe that. You had to believe, but God commendeth his love toward us. Amen. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Well, I wasn't even born then. Yeah. I wasn't even around then. But thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Well, that doesn't make sense how one man can die for the sins of many. Thus saith the Lord. Just like one man's sin can make all be condemned. Adam's sin caused all to be condemned. One man's righteousness can bring righteousness for all men. Thus saith the Lord. So God committed His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now here it is. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so now the Bible says this. The Bible says to, to, for whosoever shall call. This is what the Bible says. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be say, saved. saved. Now, what do you got to do to be saved? You got to call upon the name of the Lord. You got to believe that He died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and He rose again the third day. He shed His perfect, pure, and precious and powerful blood for your sins and my sins. You got to believe that. That was shed for you. And you got to believe that you're a sinner. There's nothing you can do to be saved not on your own. And you're guilty. And you just put your trust. And you call out to him and cry out, Lord, save me. Yes, sir. Thus saith the Lord. You've got to trust him. 
You've got to put your face on Him. And believe on Him. And that's how you get saved. Nothing else. Now, did Abraham get imputed righteousness? He believed God. Now, here's someone to give you a blessing. Afterwards. Afterwards. He believed in God's imputed righteousness. Afterwards. He wound up getting a little weak in his faith. Didn't he? Yeah. Didn't he get weak in his faith? You guys know the story of the Bible. He wound up getting so weak in his faith that he laughed about it. He said, thinking, (laughs) you got to be kidding me, God. She's dead. Her womb's dead. Matter of fact, Isaac means laughter. God says, okay, because you guys laughed so much. We're going to call his name Isaac so you never forget that you guys laughed. (laughs) They wind up doubting. That's right. They believed, then they later on, they doubted. Yep. Now, guess what happens? Not only that, but also he doubted so much, he wound up getting in the flesh and going to Hagar. That's right. But was he still imputed righteousness? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was. Because when he believed in God. Now, let me help you for a minute, okay? When you believe in the Lord... You are, Bible says, you are sealed until the day of redemption. There's nothing that can change that. Because once you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we are sealed and we are kept by His power. Not our own power. And He cannot deny Himself. Now sometimes you're going to, your faith is going to do like this sometimes. Because you live in this world. Sometimes you're going to be on top of the mountain. And you're going to be, man, I'm, things are so good and God's so good. But sometimes you might actually be like Peter. I don't know the man. And the Lord says, ah, but I know you. <laughs> I know you. You see, because once you begin to know the Lord, once you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says He knows you. <laughs> and nothing can separate you from that. So to believe on the Lord is to accept His sacrifice, to believe on Him, to trust in Him. That's what it means, to trust. Look at the book of Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. Look at Ephesians 1. I just want to be very clear about this. Look at Ephesians 1. The Bible uses several words. It uses the word receive, uses or believe, and then it uses this word to help you understand what it's talking about. Ephesians 1 verse 13. We saw it when Abraham believed he was fully persuaded. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't think about the fact that he was dead at that time. He simply, his womb was dead or Sarah's womb was dead. He simply trusted and said, God, you said it, I believe it. Amen. And that's all it took. Yeah. That's all it took for him to be imputed righteousness. Now it says Ephesians 1, Ephesians 1. Uh, I'm going to pick it up in the middle of the context for sake of time. Actually, let's just look at it. Because it goes, look at verse number 7. In whom, that whom is talking about Jesus Christ. You can look it up in the pre, actually let's look at verse 1. The Bible says this, sorry verse 5. Having predestinated us according, uh, uh, sorry, predestinated us unto the adoption of children. By who? Jesus Christ. To himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted. What does it say? See, we are accepted in the beloved because we're in his grace. Verse number seven. In whom, talking about in Christ, we have redemption. How? Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Notice everything's in Christ. Verse 11. In whom? In Christ. Also, we have obtained an inheritance. Isn't that what uh, Abraham was asking about? Isn't that what the Lord is telling Abraham about? Yep. An inheritance? That's right. Look at it, verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated. 
according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will, that we should be to the praise of His glory. Look what it says, verse 12, who first was to say, trusted in Christ, in whom also ye, uh, sorry, in whom ye also trusted, now look what it says, after that you heard the word of truth. So after you hear the truth, just like Abraham, he heard the truth, the gospel of your salvation. We hear the gospel, which is that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose in the grave, in whom, in Christ, also after that you what? Believe. Believed. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. What does it mean to believe? It means that you hear the word, you hear you're a sinner. When I was a young lad, young boy, I heard, I understood, hey, I'm a sinner, I'm guilty, and I'm not a Christian, I'm not a child of God, that I'm guilty, I deserve to go to hell, but Christ loved me, His blood for me, died for me, and resurrected for me, and then I heard that story, and heard if I'd accept Him, receive Christ, believe in Christ, I'd be saved. And the best way I knew how, with childlike faith, I said, Lord Jesus, please save me. I believe on you. And he saved me. Because he is faithful. Because of him. Because I trusted in him. The best way I knew how. I didn't understand all these deep doctrines. To be open with you, I, I didn't even think about eternal security or not. I just didn't talk. I need to be saved. He saves me. Praise the Lord. And I just know I'm going to heaven because of that. <laughs> And that's all you got to do to be saved. And it means to trust Him. That's what it means. If you've never put your trust in Him, uh, then you're not saved. If you're trusting in religion, you're not saved. And I mean saved, let me explain what I mean by saved. Saved from going to hell. Delivered from going to hell. The word saved means delivered. Spared, delivered from going to hell. If you've never received tr Christ, you've never trusted Christ, never believed on Him, then you're not saved. But if you put your trust on Him, and I'm not going to judge your heart, it's between you and the Lord, then you're saved. Amen. If you have trusted in what Jesus Christ did at Calvary's cross, how He shed His blood for you, and He's got to trust that blood, amen? Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. The blood is what brings the remission of sins. Religion doesn't bring it. What brings it is knowing Christ. If you trust in Christ then bless God, you're saved. Amen. But you've got to trust. There has to be a time in your life where you put your trust in Him. Yes, there has to be a time in your life where you personally put your trust in Him. Okay? People say, I ask people, how long have you been a Christian? All my life. You haven't been a Christian all your life. You have not been, there is no one on this universe has been a Christian all their life. You say, how do you know that? But the Bible saith. Amen. Look at Hebrews with me. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. The Bible says this in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 3. I think it's in verse number. I'm doing this off the top of my head. Yeah, verse number 14. The Bible says this. For we are made partakers of Christ. Hebrews 3.14 For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the say, beginning of our company steadfast unto the end. We'll talk about that other part later but there has to be a beginning. That's the part that I want you to see. If you have not had a beginning if you have not been a time where you have personally received Christ you're not saved. You have to personally accept Christ as your own Savior. You have to personally believe on Christ and put your trust in Christ as your own Savior. And go back to the book of John. Let me show you something. John 1. Let me show you something. John 1. He's going he's to hammer that into us. So I want, to, I want you to see it. And, and then I'm going to come back and talk about it a little bit more. John 1. Verse number, verse number 12. But as many as received Him. So what they had to do? Receive, receive Him. To them gave He power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on His name, which were born, here's what I want you to see, not of blood. In other words, it doesn't matter about your blood type. That's right. You can be a Rockefeller, yeah. Yeah. or you can be, I don't know, whoever's some, 
me. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference. You are not physically born into the family of God. You're not physically born into the family of God by your blood type. You say, well, I, got, I could trace my lineage back to uh, Captain Cook. So? I can trace it back to King Tut. So? I can trace it back to Moses. So? Makes no difference. Your blood type is not going to get you to heaven. White, black, polka dotted, green, or purple. Doesn't make a difference. Amen. Which are born not of blood, nor the what? Will of the flesh. Nor of the will of the flesh. Not of your fleshly works. Not of your self-development. Your self-effort. Or your reformation that you do. Right. That won't save you. I'm going to reform my life. I'm going to become a Christian. No, you don't become a Christian by something you do. Amen. You don't say, well, I'm going to start going to church, reading my Bible and praying. That doesn't make you a Christian. Because right. right. it says not. Because I, I, so, some people got some strong willpower. Sure. Some people have strong willpower. I'm going to quit drinking. So I can, I'm going to quit drinking, quit smoking, quit doing whatever you want to name. And I'm going to become a Christian. That doesn't make you a Christian. You might quit smoking, quit drinking, and quit doing partying, all that kind of stuff. That doesn't make you a Christian. That's right. And you might come to our church every single Sunday, every single Wednesday, and that does not make you a Christian. Some people have strong willpower. There's a lot of people that have willpower to live, quote unquote, a good life without God. And so what God is saying here, none of your will of flesh will never do it. Because the Bible says, in, in the flesh you cannot please God. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. Amen. So you take a man, he's not saved, he's, he's, a, he's, a, uh, he's trying to live a good life, trying to be holy, trying to be righteous, trying to please God, and all these things in his flesh. And God, and, and when, when he gives us, he can give two million, five million, six million, seven million dozen the offering plate. It wouldn't do you any good whatsoever. It wouldn't do you any good. And I can baptize you. You can take the Lord's Supper. You can be christened. Do all those things. It wouldn't do it. Because the will of flesh won't do it. The Bible says this is verse number 13 again. Which are born not of blood. That's, that's your blood top. Nor the will of flesh. Nor the will of man. In other words. I can't pray my son into heaven. I can't take my little child. And make my little, take my child to the priest or the pastor or whatever. And that makes my little child a Christian. Amen. That'll never do it. Because it says not of the will of man. If I had my will and I had my way, I'd make everybody in the world a Christian. Yep. So the will of man can't make somebody a Christian. Right. Or in this case, a child of God. Amen. Can't make somebody a child of God. Chill, uh, young people, just because you're parents, you grew up in a Christian home, does it make you a Christian? Yeah, that's right. Does it make you a Christian? Well, my mom and dad are Christian. That doesn't make you a Christian. Your mom and dad want you to be a Christian. Yeah. Well, that doesn't make you a Christian. And that's a scary thing, really. Think about it. A lot of Christian people, a lot of Christian families raise children and they think they're going to heaven just because they've been in church all their life. And they think they're going to go there because mom and dad's a Christian and they've grown up in Christian. They even got baptized by a Christian man. A Christian preacher baptized them. That doesn't make you a Christian. Right. I want you to understand that being baptized doesn't make you a Christian. Amen. And even I baptized you. And I don't know who all is in here. But I want you to know something. That doesn't make you a Christian. Right. We may think that you're a Christian. I wouldn't baptize you otherwise. Yeah. But it doesn't make you a Christian. Not the will of man. Look what it says here. How are they born then? Not of blood, not the will of flesh, or the will of man. But what does it say? But of God. But of God. You have to be born of God. Yes, sir. You cannot be saved by any kind of self-will, any kind of self-help. You have to be born of God. Amen. And how do you get born of God? He just got through telling you. 
book of Genesis, chapter number 3, and all throughout the Bible, it starts it off with this. He told Adam, Adam, you sinned. You've sinned, you've done wrong. And because you've done wrong, he gave him the curse. And he said this to the woman, to Eve. He said to her, he said, there's going to be a seed. You're going to have a seed. And that seed is going to be the one that's going to bruise and stomp the head of the enemy. And his heel is going to be bruised. But that seed, and you trace it throughout your Bible, is going to be the one to bring redemption. Amen. And you know who that seed is? It's Jesus Christ. He is the seed of Abraham. He is the seed of Judah. He is a lie in the tribe of Judah. He is the seed of the woman who had been brought forth. Brought forth to bring redemption. You know what you got to do? Just like, a, just like for a little baby to be born, a woman has to receive the seed. She has to accept the seed. God doesn't believe in forcing himself upon anyone. And for you to be saved, what you've got to be born again, you have to willingly accept and receive Jesus Christ, the seed. And once you accept and receive Jesus Christ, believe on him, then he comes in and he rebirths you. He makes you a new creature Look, it says in the book of 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, and look at verse number 17, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Look, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, the Bible says this, 2 Corinthians 5, look, it says in verse number 17, the Bible says this, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ. Now remember what we read over in the book of Ephesians about in him, in whom, in him. And how do you get in him? In him? By believing. What does it mean to believe? By trusting in him. That's what it means. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is, what does it say? A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are, what does it say? You're a whole new creature. You're a new person. Amen. You are born again. You, Brand new. Now guess what? And there's so much to talk about on this. If you become a new creature in Christ, uh, you're, you're like a little baby. And it takes time to learn and to grow. And that's what happens. Okay? And then you feed on the Word of God. It's the Word of God you need to feed on. And, and you're going to make a mess as you're growing. But as you grow and you keep feeding on the Word of God, you're going to get stronger. Amen? And all right. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to stop right there. I just want you to understand to receive Christ is to, be to believe on Christ is to put your trust on Christ. That's what it means. The Bible is so clear. It's to trust Him. And you individually must do that. If you've not put your trust in Him, that means no, you're not trusting religion, you're not trusting the preacher, you're not trusting the, 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 the Pope, the priest, the pastor, anybody. You're putting your trust in Jesus Christ. Not trusting your works, you're trusting in Him, what He did at Calvary. And you're believing on Him and accepting that. Accepting Him, really, not, not that, but accepting Him as your sacrifice. You're the one that took your place at that moment when you accept Him. You're born again, you're saved. And you're safe for all of eternity. Amen. 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 We're going to go, Lord, in prayer.